unruly tenant. She started to inflict damages. And an unfit mother? Why is it that you still haven't gotten the seven children back? An eviction notice leads to a trashed house and death threats for the landlord. Real estate investor Roger Janke is suing his former tenant for property damages. Bennett Helen Lewis says the house was in shambles when she moved in. Now it's Joe time. Janke, you're suing Miss Lewis, who was a former tenant on one of your rental properties, and you say she committed waste upon the premises. Uh, Miss Lewis, you say you didn't do anything because the home was a shambles before you moved in. You also say that out of the nine children you have, he caused seven of them to be removed from your custody by the Child Protective Services. Correct. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, this lady had moved into my property about October of 2009 and was a problem from the beginning and started to inflict damages to my property. I asked her to leave the property and she refused. So I started the eviction process. However, she retaliated by calling the uh, inspector for the Harris County and they have given me a bunch and of you, violations. I, I've got a list of that she provided and you allege that those things were actually caused by the defendant, not in the inherent condition of the properties. That's correct. But in your laundry list, you are alleging that the windows were broken, holes were put in the walls, and essentially the house was trashed from top to bottom. Uh, that's when I started to see that she inflicting damages to my property and retaliated by calling the inspectors. All right, so the inspectors were called after you filed the, uh, the, the eviction. eviction process. <clears throat> that's correct. And in order to bring that house to a livable condition, for another tenant to move in there, it will cost approximately $6,000. Not the bottom of the proposal to fix that house. I All got right. another proposal to do it for about $14,000. All right, now we'll go to you. Thank you. And for the record, um, <laughs> Judge O'Brien, when I first moved in the house, it wasn't October the 10th. That's just how long he held on to the lease, not wanting to even give me a lease. I moved in the house on September the 25th actually and by him saying that the house that i did inflict the damage to the house he's a lie i did not the health department came to the house actually after cps came in and took my kids away from me because of the damages of the home and i had been called the city of houston health department on him before cps even came but they never just came well, out until it, CPS the way came. i look at it child protective services came to investigate you they called uh, for the city inspection. You also seem to have called the city inspectors closely proximate. In other words, they complained, you complained. If you look at the paperwork for the, the complaints of all the complaints that I was given to the city of Houston for the sewage problem, it the, was... Um, the sewage problem is yeah. another matter. But I'm saying, when I first moved in the house, I had sewage problems in the house when I first moved in there at the beginning that was the main problem and he never fixed that i had to get that fixed myself when you say sewer problems are you talking about back the line up, to the yeah, sewer the or whole the sewer back up itself? to the backyard through the, the living it was messed like the black nasty gooky nasty stuff coming through the tub coming through the toilet all through my floor destroying my t um, furniture and everything my clothes and we just had moved in there and my neighbors they had just my neighbors came and seen everything as well when they did, he didn't want me to do nothing. He told me to buy the bleach, buy everything. He didn't want to do nothing for the house at all. He hired a plumber. The plumber came in. The plumber came to me and said, well, you might as well, you know, pay for this yourself or something because he's not going to pay for it. I see that right All now. That's he didn't want to pay $25. I, I can't consider that. Okay, well, can you look at the video camera? I'm going the, to the, take the a look at it, but I'm listening to everybody because that's a convenient method of testing everyone's credibility. And I have video showing the condition of the property before she moved in and after she moved out. I'll hold the video before and after for right now. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. Look at the commode. How can, can somebody do that to a bathroom? How can somebody it's do that? Sit there. When you sit on stuff like it was brand new, how can yeah. you break yeah. something yeah. brand new? Let's sure see the rest of it. I can't believe that he something. had the nerve to show that. <laughs>
You gonna die. Also, you gonna die and go to hell. Or she moved in. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll yeah, you real see that's the thing. I'm waiting for the, the other one. You're doing that as rebuttal. All right, this is yours. And it will. As you see right now, they put this one moving around on the ground right here. You get out of tackle range. It's Joe time after this. The plaintiff in this case says his tenant threatened him, trashed his property, and tried to assault him when he evicted her. Now he wants money for damages. Let's take a look in the courtroom. There's a matter of something in her hand. That's correct. She held a classic rod and started to threaten my life that she, I wouldn't get out from that property alive. And also verbalized my home address and mentioned that she knows where to get me. Now, so, how, had this gone on before, or is this the first time this came up? That, when the inspector was there, she start, started to threaten me. But prior to that, she did also came up to my truck and tried to throw a punch at me and put my truck in reverse and leave. <laughs> Rather awkward. <laughs> All right. So you've supplied me with some invoices and estimates on the repairs and that's uh, considerably over the limit it's it's a bit over six thousand dollars your honor i'm just i'm just trying to sit up here and see how he can sit up here and try to sue me for damages that he know that was already occurred to the property before well, i may moved I ask on you there. a question why did you move into the place the reason why i moved bad? the reason why i moved in there sir because i was staying with my cousin my son had just got shot prior to that same year is that the 21 my 21 year old, year old son he got shot six times and I oh, had to go boy, stay with my cousin. I tell people all the time they're nice and cute and fluffy when they're five and six and exactly. three and four and two. But there's this whole thing about man training and it's just a bad a neighborhood sometimes. And yeah, you find it's, it's a bad neighborhood in. wherever you live. No, but it's I'm not everywhere saying. you live. It's, it's bad everywhere you no, go. It yes, isn't. it is. Yes, no, it, it is. isn't. Just I'm not me. listening to you because Why? you're making yourself a victim. When to a great but extent a you contribute to son, the problem of, all, of being a victim. First of all, my son Why'd is 21 years old. Why did you start off at such a young age to have your 21-year-old son? I was 18. What, what do you 18, mean? 18, you got pregnant old, at 17. Graduated. Do you have a husband? I gra No, I don't. You know, because right now, ain't nobody really the judge or the jury or God for me. I am right you now. Judge. I'm judging. Yeah, I am being an arbitrator. But you know, I see right and I am advising you of the error of your ways. You bring this okay, on yourself. Okay, okay. Nine times you chose to not get yourself married to your paramour. Yes, so you just did it critical, playing at it. About my kids. I'm here for him, not my, my kids. And you, do you have one on the way? Do you think I have one on the way? I don't know. You're talking know like either. you're trying to. Let uh, me know. Yeah, I'm listening to your tone. I might, and say, I might do have one on the way. Yeah, you do. do. That's what I'm listening what? to. You're being defensive. I might do. So now have you one. got ten off of being unemployed. Okay, and. But if I, I don't like to, paying for all, your children, I had all my I kids. I don't like paying for your children. I don't get welfare, sir. Yes, because you don't have seven of your children. Kids. One of them shot, and the next one isn't staying with you. He's gone that, you someplace know what? That else. That is very cruel for you to say that something like cruel, that. That is cruel because it's very fact. Cruel. Well, get ready. I'm not that trying is, to be nice to you. Cruel. I like nice, safe neighborhoods where I everybody is in prosperous his, with morality and. Ethics and His decent, viable not safe economy. Neither, judge. Well, he just happens to be the landlord. You a live in it. Slumlord. Slumlord. Well, you moved slumlord. into it. What do you have to say, unemployed father of all of these children? <laughs> six of them that you aren't paying child support. Judge. Three of them. Three of them. And you're four years younger than your uh, your girlfriend hey, over here with either? one on the way, about to be father of five out of uh, five out of the ten. Well, What's I'm, your excuse? I'm, I'm talking about him. I ain't talking about the kids. I'm talking about everybody I, here. I work with him. He's a scum lord. What kind scum of scum lord? Go? Then why'd you stay in scum premises? Instead of paying for your girlfriend and some of your children to be elsewhere. But the re the, like, what's your excuse? Are you employed? No, I got my own. I work. What do you do? <laughs> and by I do the way, landscaping. How far did you get in school? To twelve. You graduated from twelve? No, sir. Why not? I had family problems. No, you got an excuse. You didn't take care of your man business, which is you have to have certain skills. And if you got 10 kids, you hooked yourself up with, and it's your obligation to be able to take care of them. You can't afford them. Because <laughs> well, what you make is not adequate to deal with the number of children. And by the way, since you no longer live there, and you are implying that because it was a slum situation, 
That's why you got your children taken. So you aren't there now. Why haven't they come back to you? Because it's, it, with there. any other with any other company, it takes time to do things. What do you mean any I other to, company? I had to go through parenting classes. I yes. had to do all that stuff. Good idea. Just because of them. Because people need to learn how to be good parents because you I aren't even, in, you, what are I you, 27, in, uh, 29 projects. years old? And nobody you are 29. You got caught up where your youngest common law stepchild is old enough to buy whiskey. That's a man. You're just six, seven years older than him. But some men don't want to do nothing for their father. They got some bad fathers out there, you know. Wait a minute. Do something for their father? Oh, man. It's killing that. You know what For their dads. There's some bad person. people out there who won't do nothing. And these kids their dad. growing up, their dad is going to run out of one of them. I'm not one of them. If I move with Yeah, up, you got suckered, young man. You got somebody with nine kids hooked you up to get four more that she's getting a check for. Now it's going to be one more for five. You're stuck with this situation, and you're in a hell of a mess because she's running you around. Actually, you get thrown I, actually, around like you a rag doll because she's I about six, six years older than you. when I met him. What? I had six kids when I met him. Yeah, you. now you got nine. You don't know if I'm having 10 or not. I don't know. Well, you just said, what if I probably I say, what am? If I yeah. am? What if, like I said, what if I am? Well, you know what? I'd feel much better about it if you were married and you could afford them instead of some of the federal taxes getting siphoned off into paying for your situation through AFDC. And what does that do? Provide That's for them to have a funds. roof over their head. What? What? That's what I said. I but said they that's aren't with you now. That's head. why you're unemployed and I don't get it from, And I don't get it anymore until I get them back. The people who they stand with. That's why it. they don't want them to come back. Because yeah, there are ten house, of them soon to be. One of them right shot right now, and grown. Sir. One of them won't stay with you. I have a house And now right you, now, got, sir. Uh, you have uh, eight more out there. And the only support for all of them is sir, what the feds put up. I have a nice And a little bit of change from the Texas is because two of them are slow learners. And it's not from no SSI or nothing like that, oh, sir. Oh, never mind. Okay, yes, let's, look at, the let's, let's look at the videos. Let's look, look at the videos. Let's look at the videos. Let's look at the videos. Look at the videos. Yeah, there we go. Video. Look at the videos. Let's see what we have. What is that? That's trash that she left at the house there. In the front and of the, the house. And that's the front for the broken window she inflicted, backyard. She pulled out the screen windows, <laughs> uh, <laughs> inflicting damages uh, to the sheet rack, to the doors. <laughs> I see the cardboard in uh, where the windows used to be. Pictures speak a thousand words. Uh, oh, broken flan bait. Look at the uh, No bulbs. Broken drawer. <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> damaged. Uh, sheet rack. Door. Punched hold. <laughs> uh, punch hole in the sheet rack. Uh, again, the, the hinges for the door broken. I mean, lock part. Faucet in bathroom, wrenched out. All the stuff. Uh, that. Inflicted damage. Look at the commode. How can, can somebody do that to a bathroom? How can somebody it's do incredible. that? Sit there. That it's is, old. That when you stuff, it's you old. Get, How come you didn't die uh, yet? When you get old, when you sit on stuff like it was brand new, how can yeah. you break something yeah. brand new? Let's sure see the rest I can't of it. How somebody going to break something? He had the nerve to show that, <laughs> saying that I'd done that. And well, that's then, how that house You have when one. I Let's see yours. Let's see that yours. That is ridiculous. <laughs> you going to die you gonna die and go to hell. Before she moved in. Yeah, well, we'll be. You real see that. Thing. I'm we waiting for the, the other one. You're doing that as rebuttal. All right, this is yours. <laughs> and it will. As you see right now, the house had roaches. They this one moving around on the ground right here. That's a roach right there. A roach. We'll be back with more Judge Joe Brown in a moment. <laughs> and then he got the you big old boy. hole in the wall in my daughter's room where anything could come out. He never put a vent on that. This unruly tenant. She started to inflict damages. And an unfit mother? Why is it that you still haven't gotten the seven children back? An eviction notice leads to a trashed house and death threats for the landlord. Real estate investor Roger Janke is suing his former tenant for property damages. Bennett Helen Lewis says the house was in shambles when she moved in. Now it's Joe time. Janke, you're suing Miss Lewis, who was a former tenant on one of your rental properties, and you say she committed waste upon the premises. Uh, Miss Lewis, you say you didn't do anything because the home was a shambles before you moved in. 
You also say that out of the nine children you have, he caused seven of them to be removed from your custody by the Child Protective Services. Correct. Okay. Uh, your Honor, this lady had moved into my property about October of 2009 and was a problem from the beginning and started to inflict damages to my property. I asked her to leave the property and she refused. So I started the eviction process. However, she retaliated by calling the uh, inspector for the Harris County and they have given me a bunch and of you, violations. I, I've got a list of that she provided and you allege that those things were actually caused by the defendant, not in the inherent condition of the properties. That's correct. But in your laundry list, you are alleging that the windows were broken, holes were put in the walls, and essentially the house was trashed from top to bottom. Uh, that's when I started to see that she inflicting damages to my property and retaliated by calling the inspectors. All right, so the inspectors were called after you filed the, uh, the, the eviction. eviction process. <clears throat> that's correct. And in order to bring that house to a livable condition, for another tenant to move in there, it will cost approximately $6,000. Not the bottom of the proposal to fix that house. I All got right. another proposal to do it for about $14,000. All right, now we'll go to you. Thank you. And for the record, um, <laughs> Judge Joe Brown, when I first moved in the house, it wasn't October the 10th. That's just how long he held on to the lease, not wanting to even give me a lease. I moved in the house on September the 25th actually and by him saying that the house that i did inflict the damage to the house he's a lie i did not the health department came to the house actually after cps came in and took my kids away from me because of the damages of the home and i had been called the city of houston health department on him before cps even came but they never just came well, out until it, CPS the way came. i look at it child protective services came to investigate you they called uh, for the city inspection. You also seem to have called the city inspectors closely proximate. In other words, they complained, you complained. If you look at the paperwork for the, the complaints of all the complaints that I was given to the city of Houston for the sewage problem, it the, was... Um, the sewage problem is yeah. another matter. But I'm saying, when I first moved in the house, I had sewage problem in the house when I first moved in there at the beginning that was the main problem and he never fixed that i had to get that fixed myself when you say sewer problems are you talking about back the line up, to the yeah, sewer the or whole the sewer back up itself? to the backyard through the, the living it was messed like that black nasty gookies nasty stuff coming through the tub coming through the toilet all through my floor destroying my t um, furniture and everything my clothes and we just had moved in there and my neighbors they had just my neighbors came and seen everything as well when they did, he didn't want me to do nothing. He told me to buy the bleach, buy everything. He didn't want to do nothing for the house at all. He hired a plumber. The plumber came in. The plumber came to me and said, well, you might as well, you know, pay for this yourself or something because he's not going to pay for it. I see that right All now. That's he didn't want to pay $25. I, I can't consider that. Okay, well, can you look at the video camera? I'm going the, to the, take the a look at it, but I'm listening to everybody because that's a convenient method of testing everyone's credibility. And I have video showing the condition of the property before she moved in and after she moved out. I'll hold the video before and after for right now. We'll be right back with Judge Joe Brown. Look at the commode. How can, can somebody do that to a bathroom? How can somebody it's do that? Sit there. When you sit on stuff like it was brand new, how can yeah. you break something yeah. brand new? Let's sure see the rest I can't of believe. it. How somebody gonna break something? He had the nerve to show that. <laughs> You gonna I die, you gonna die and go to hell. Or she moved in. Yeah, well, we don't need it. You real see that's the thing. I'm waiting for the, the other one. You're doing that as rebuttal. All right, this is yours. And it will. As you see right now, they put this one moving around on the ground right here. You get out of tackle range. It's Joe time after this. The plaintiff in this case says his tenant threatened him, trashed his property, and tried to assault him when he evicted her. Now he wants money for damages. Let's take a look in the courtroom there's a matter of something in her hand. That's correct. She held a closet rod and started to threaten my life that she, I wouldn't get out from that property alive. And also verbalized.